G'day guys and welcome to another episode of Team Mad Mullet Fishing Adventures. On today's show we're actually down here on the beautiful Gold Coast. Not actually out to target a specific, specific species. We're going to go around to some different locations. Good, some good spots for the family, others not so much good for the family. And show you how to adapt to a situation, how to fish different locations and what to look for. Let's get into it. Alright guys, this particular place at you know, Freshwater Point Besides the jetty here where we're fishing, it's not overly kid friendly. As you can see along the foreshore here, there's a lot of rocks. There's a bit of a sandy beach next to the, the, uh, the boat ramp. But when it comes to being kid friendly, yeah, not so much. But if they fish off the jetty, can't really fit through the railings. Not massive fish, just all around good fun fish. If you look out into the water here, I don't know whether you can pick it up on camera. All that swirling water, that's called eddies. That's caused from rock formation down under the water. And as the tide's washing over it, it's hitting it and making an upwelling. That sort of area is basically structure. Main target species here is brim. In the summer, you will come across mangrove jack, cod, brim, flathead whiting. But being winter, it's mainly brim and flathead. At the moment, I am getting a bite. It's very, very small. Definitely nothing to write home about. But, at the end of the day, we're fishing, enjoying the outdoors. Alrighty guys, on to my first fish down here at Freshwater Point. Just using a four pound. Setting the drag fairly loose. Nice. Brim. Alrighty guys, just unhooked him. He's an alright brim. Nice fun. But uh, we'll go ahead and let him go. I okay, go guys, I'm on to my first fish here at Freshwater Point. I'm using white bait and hardy heads for bait. Not a big fish, but it's a start. Once again, I'm using that two hook snail rig, half a metre tray swivel and a light sinker. May running four pounds on this rig, just like last time. Alrighty guys, well we're down here on the Narang River. And you can see in the background here the, the bridge that goes across the Narang River. I think it's called the Sundale Bridge. Perfect location for the family. They don't expect to come down here and catch any monster fish. Fairly simple tackle. Long chain hook, nice long leader, swivel, and a light sinker. The old humble prawn. Uh, slide it on around the hook, and then a half hitch. Just like so. What we're going to do? Flick it out about 20 meters. Let it hit the bottom, keep the slack up, and just wait for that telltale bite. Now they're not very big bites here, just a little, little like rat-a-tat-tat sort of bite. Nothing big. You can see Josh is on him behind me here. And see, just a little brim, nothing special, but great fun for the kids. Look, fishy. Fishy. Alright 
already, guys. On to my second fish. It was pretty nice. Just running four pound. Just running four pound, so we're gonna have the drag set fairly loose. Feels like a brim. Yep. Oh, I'm on as well. Hey, old boy, you want to grab the camera? Yep. There we go, it's a bit better fish than anyone's book. That particular fish there will be around that that 30 centimetre mark. It's definitely a keeper. But today he will be released. As you can see around us, there's a lot of activity. There are boats going up and down the river. We've got jet skis with the new craze, I don't know what they call it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you, even though there's a lot of activity, you can still catch fish. On oh, no, another fish. On the four pound gear again. Nice and light, nice long rod, nice and fun. Looks big, but won't be massive by any means. Hey Lily, uh, hold, hold. Yeah, look, look at that. Oh wow. I she got someone else's line. This fish has actually swallowed it. Cut it off as close as you can to the mouth. This fish isn't legal, so it has to go back. Legal in Queensland is 25 centimeters. A layer? Yep, we're gonna put him in the water. You kiss? No? Yeah, bye bye fishy. And uh, Josh is on. I've got another fish here. Just on four pound, so uh, take it nice and easy. That can be sort of towards me, I think. Another, another brim. Is it Lily? What is it, Lily? Brim. Yeah, fishy. This particular fish would probably be legal, but not going to bother about measuring him. Just start releasing. Alrighty, guys. Hook him. Alrighty, guys. I don't know whether you can pick it up. Another thing to look out for when you're trying to find here is the fish. See all the swirling and all the showering out here? And that's bait fish. And that big shower you just seen was predatory fish coming up underneath this sort of area. You'd throw your, your soft plastics and, and things like that, for brim and, and trevally and whatnot. There's actually quite a few fish here, so what we might do is might chuck on a couple of plastics and have a go. And also, if, as, if you can see through here, you got a lot of trawlers. Now, when a trawler comes in, it cleans deck and all that sort of thing, so scraps go into the water. You're not allowed to fish off these particular jetties, but what you can do is get some old scraps and, and burly the water up. The fish are used to feeding on scraps. Unweighted piece of bait with a hook in it, in the line, 
and throw it in amongst that you should get yourself some good brim. But what we're going to do now, we're going to get the plastics out and see if we can't get a fish out of this. The thing about fishing different areas is adapting to different situations. Now, we're down here in the canals. We're not targeting anything in Pacific. We're just showing you different styles of fishing. This is just a baby Moses perch. Now, the rig I'm using today is a fairly simple rig. Two hook rig. Just over half a metre of four pound. The bait I'm using is a white bait. The reason for the two two hook rig is one hook goes midsection, one hook in the eye. When it comes to the sink compartment, fairly small, this is only a size one. And as you can see out here, got a fair bit of current, eddies, and what we're wanting to do is cast into the current and just let that sinker and that bait wash around naturally. Wait for that nice bite and strike. The old boy's onto his first fish of the morning. Say a little brim. Hey Lily, Lily look, Poppy's got a brim. <gasps> What's that? Is that you wanna see? Fishy. Get the hook out and put this fish back. All right guys, I'm on to another fish. The rig I'm using is, at this stage, definitely out fishing the rig my dad is using. I think it's purely because that bait is wafting around and making it a lot more natural. We have a lot of boat, boating traffic here today, so fishing does get quite hard. taking my time as I'm only running four pound right the way through this here. It's a, uh, not a bad size brim. Just take your time, pump and wind, and you eventually get your prize. It's just out there in the water. run. There we go. That there, in anyone's book, is a nice fish. A well and truly legal, he'd be definitely in the 35, 36 sort of centimetre range. But today, we're only yet to show you how to adapt to a situation. I just release this fella. keep fishing. I was just about to um, rebait and um, I noticed one of my hooks have been crushed in. Now these by no means are my hooks. I forgot my um, brim hooks today so I had to go to BCF and unfortunately I had to buy some uh, hooks and it just goes to show you my quality. You know. Luckily, I pinned him by the bottom hook. Obviously, the top hook was in his mouth. He actually crushed that down. By quality. I'm on to another fish. Definitely not as big as the last one. That, the old boy's on as well. Mine's a, a little Moses perch. Look at this, Bubba. Moses perch. What's the old boy got? Another brim. Another brim. brim. I'll release this fish. Uh, the old boy's got another small brim. Not legal, but we're still having fun catching fish at the end of the day. And. 
little trick I use is I just watch the slack in the line. And normally when there's a bite, you'll notice the slack will start to take up before you even feel the bite. So you're alert of what's going to happen prior to it happening. The old boy's just getting a bite at the moment. There we go, all he had to do was wait for that nice weight. Strike, and he's on. Definitely nothing to write home about, it's a tiny little brim. Alrighty guys, so um, we just changed spots. And we've moved to uh, the seaway, the end of the seaway wall on the south side. And um, what we're doing is gonna try and um, see if we can't get some tailor, trevally, kingfish on um, either slugs or um, some soft plastics. I'm, in particular, I'm using slugs today. Josh will be using um, some plastics. So what we're, what we're doing here, I do apologize for the, the sun, but I like to fish this uh, spot on sunset. So what I like to do, cast out as far as I can. And just let it sink. Now it's 20 odd meters deep out there. So you can let it sink down for quite some time. This particular combo I'm using, two and a half thousand size reel and a two to five kilo rod and 20 pound braid. 30 pound leader and it's a 20 gram um, slug I've got on. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to leave it for a second and show you. Basically, rod down as low as you can go and wind as quick as you can possibly wind. Now, on calm days like this, fish don't usually bite as well. I like it to be turbulence, I like that white wash. I like a bit of weed getting washed around, just creates cover. So I'm not expected to catch anything this afternoon. Uh, another thing you, you should really do is always keep an eye on the water. You never know when that freak wave is going to come. When you get a hook up, you know all about it. Just keep repeating this process until you get a good solid hook up. Alrighty guys, I'm going to show you my setup. For today, what I'm using is just a, a white blackbeard uh, paddle tail with a 3 8 ounce Rio jig head. What you want to do is pass it out as far as you possibly can. And, um, as you're letting it sink to the bottom, somewhat keep your line tight and feel, see if you can feel any bites as it's going down because it is wriggling as it goes down. And when you think you're fairly close to the bottom, you might like to flat. Give it a couple of sharp jigs. Like so. If you think you're close, wind it up, just so you don't get stuck on that drop off and just keep repeating. Alrighty guys, so um, we've shown you a bit of versatility fishing today. So basically going to different areas <laughs> and uh, basically adapting to the area. Alright guys, until next time, cheers and good luck.